Hello everybody and welcome back to your YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the notion of curve fitting and then we will also be going for an implementation of polynomial fit using Python. So what is curve fitting? Curve fitting is basically an optimization process the objective of which is to find an optimal set of parameters for a well defined function that best fits a given observation. So the idea is that we are given a bunch of data points that we also call as observations and we believe that there is some function f which will be able to capture the variation in the data. We do not know that particular function so what we do is we assume a particular family of functions and then the notion of curve fitting is to find out an optimal set of parameters so that the function is able to fit the data in the best possible manner. Okay, And then depending upon the family of function that I choose there are different curve fitting techniques possible. For example, we can have a polynomial fit where I'm assuming that the function belongs to a class of polynomials. Likewise, we can have conic sections where we are going to deal with circular, elliptical, parabolic and hyperbolic arcs. Then in some cases, for example, in analog electronics, we also have some notion of trigonometry functions where we are going to make use of sine and cosine functions in order to fit a data. Right. So this was the basic categorization of different curve fitting techniques on the basis of the family of functions that we have taken to fit the data. Now moving on, the objective of this particular lecture is to focus on the notion of polynomial fit. So we, believe, we as already told, polynomial fit is going to be one class of curve fitting options when we are assuming that the function that we are going to fit is going to be a polynomial function of degree p. So what does it mean? It basically means that given a bunch of observations x comma y that means given these n number of x, x comma y pairs the objective of polynomial fit is to find the out optimal set of parameters bi so that i can write y in terms of x as a polynomial function of degree p right now if this particular function is of degree p then there ought to be p plus one different coefficients because there is an additional coefficient that is also called as beta naught right so this is that in a polynomial fit we are fitting a polynomial curve to the data and so that we are able to write y in terms of polynomial function of x and the degree of this particular polynomial function is p okay this is the basic idea behind a polynomial fit so enough of this basic introduction we are now straight away going to go into the implementation part so right now the objective should be that you pay attention to what i am telling just watch this particular video as if you are watching a movie and then you, I, will, I will be attaching the data sets and the codes in the description box so that you can go and check them out. And then I expect that you also experiment with your, the different settings possible. Okay. So with this we now move to the notion of implementation. So in the first step I am using NumPy library so I will simply be importing this library and then in addition to importing this library I have also set some printing options. For example, I have suppressed the scientific notation by using suppress argument set to true and then I have also set the num precision to be equal to 3 which means whatever numpy arrays I am going to display they the values will be displayed up to 3 decimal places. Now in the next step my data set is stored in the Google Drive. So the first step would be to mount my Google Drive. Right. So this is how we are going to mount our Google Drive. It will ask you basically for the permission thing. So you simply have to allow those permissions. So once you have allowed them, then a message will come that the drive has been mounted properly. I'll wait for the output. In some cases it can take some time so please be patient okay so it the message says that the drive is mounted what does it mean it basically means that now i will be able to assess the data which is there stored in the google drive so in the next step what i will be doing is my data set is actually stored in the google drive in a file called as 1d regression.txt file okay and in this txt file the x and y pairs are basically separated by a comma okay so what i am doing is i am using the load text function of numpy library to load this particular data so the first argument would be the location of the data set file 
and the second argument would be to also specify the delimiter which is separating the x and y values in this case the delimiter is a comma so accordingly it has been put so in the next step what i will be doing is i will be running this particular command so it will load this data which is stored in the txt format and it will be storing it in a variable called as data so having loaded the data set let us try to print the data set to get a good understanding of what it looks like so this is how my data set is going to look like each and every row corresponds to a given observation pair okay the first entry corresponds to the x value and the next entry corresponds to the y value so what i'm trying to say is that in this particular data set the first column is corresponding to the x or predictor values and the second column corresponds to response or y values so after having displayed the data my next step would be to perform a slicing operation on this data to separate x and y from one another okay so for this we know that the entry in the first column corresponds to x and the entry in the second column corresponds to y so accordingly i have performed a slice operation now with this slice operation coming to an end let us also try to find out how y is related to x in a visual form right so for this what i will be doing is i will be creating a scatter plot and i will be plotting the variation of y against the values of x so when i do this this is the kind of graph that i am going to get from the data set on the y axis i am get on the y axis we have the response values also shown by the symbol y and on the x axis we have got predictor values shown by the symbol x right now after having explored this particular data set visually there are few things that we are going to learn from now onwards so the idea of this session would be to fit different polynomial curves to this particular data we know that polynomial function is a one class of function and by changing the degree of this particular polynomial we can obtain different members of this family right so in this session what we are going to do is we are going to experiment with polynomial curves of different degrees and then we will be trying to fit those functions onto this particular data and after having done this thing we will also be computing the goodness of fit for these curves so you know that goodness of fit of basically quantifies the performance of curve fitting right it basically shows which curve fitting is more accurate compared to another right so we will be doing this experiments also that means for different polynomial curves of different degrees i will be computing the goodness of fit statistics to find out how good my model is and in this case the goodness of fit statistics that we will be using is least squares error i encourage you to also try different goodness of fit statistics in addition to least squares error once i have supplied you with the code and the data set and then after having experimented with different values of degree values then we will also try to find out which is the best possible curve to fit the data right so let's begin so we know that we have to perform polynomial fit fit di different degrees so what i will be doing is first of all i will be creating a numpy array by the name by the name degrees and this numpy array is supposed to store the different degrees with which we are going to experiment so in this case i have created a lin space array that is having values from 0 to 10 that means there are 11 different values for the degrees that we are going to consider in our experiments right and then what we will be doing is corresponding to each degree we will be getting some residual error right so what i will be doing is i will be storing those residual errors in a separate list and before we move on with the curve fitting let us also pay attention to what residual are all about so the idea of residual basically comes because in the real world whatever fit we are going to obtain that particular fit will not be a perfect fit there will always be some inherent imperfections right and residual basically means what is the prediction that my model is the model is making and what was the actual value how much deviation is there that deviation is basically referred to as the residual error okay and for most of the polynomial fit task the residual error that we are going to consider is called as least squares error so simply put the residual error that will be computed will be equal to this term on the right hand side so for each of the data points that there are n different data points so this summation is going to run from 1 through n and for each data point what we are going to do is we are going to find out its prediction value that means once my curve has been fit so these beta values are obtained by using these beta values i will be finding out the y predict value and i also have this y data set value 
beforehand as a part of the data set. So what I will be doing is I will be taking the difference between the two values and I will be squaring it up. And then whatever the squared error comes out to be, I will be adding this squared error across all the data points. And whatever summation we get towards the end, we will call it as residual error. Right. So in general, as you must have guessed it by now, for a given fit, the smaller the residuals, the better would be its quality. Okay. Now in the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go for curve fitting. So we know that we have to experiment with different values for degrees. So I'm going through a loop, which is going to enumerate through all these 11 values starting from zero and I'm going up to 10. And inside this particular loop, what I will be doing is I will be calling this np.polyfit function. np.polyfit function is supposed to implement polynomial curve fitting and that is why it has been called. This function takes as argument primarily three different parameters, three different arguments. First of all, the first two parameters would be x and y values itself. And then the third argument is the degree. That means the degree, what degree polynomial we have to fit, right? So in this case, we know that whatever d comes out in this particular loop, that has to be the degree of the polynomial that we are going to fit. So that is why the degree argument is set to value d. So as this particular loop progresses, we will be having different polynomial curves of different degrees, right? So inside this loop, what I'm doing is I'm going for this polynomial fit function. And that means I'm fitting a polynomial curve to the data. And then in the next two steps, I'm printing the degree coefficient and the residual errors. So let me remind you, this polyfit function returns primarily two different quantities. First of all, it is going to return, return these beta i values. That means these coefficients. And then it will also return to me the residual error as shown by as computed by this equation, right? So Results variable is containing these two values. The first value is going to contain the coefficients and the next value is going to contain the residual errors. So accordingly, I have called results of zero and results of one to get these two values. That means results of zero is going to return to me the different coefficients and result of one, it is going to return to me the residual error which has been obtained. And in the last list what I'm going to do is I'm going to append this residual error that I have obtained to this list. This list was supposed to contain the residual error corresponding to each degree, right? So at the end of the loop, what I will be doing is whatever residual error I have obtained, I will be appending it to this particular list. So let's run this command and let's try to analyze, analyze the kind of output we are getting. Okay. So these are the different outputs we are getting. So we will start from the very beginning. So the first polynomial curve that has been fed to the data has a degree equal to zero, which means P value is equal to zero. So there is only one coefficient beta naught, right? And corresponding to this polynomial fit, the residual error that has been obtained is very large. As in this case, it is around 27,483.44, right? Likewise, for degree one, degree equal to one, that means when the value of P is equal to one, I will be having two different coefficients, beta one and beta naught, right? So these two coefficients are shown separately. And then I will also be having a residual error so in this case, the residual error is about 22,167, right? Then if I were to compare these two values, what we find out is that when the degree is increased from zero to one, there is some reduction in the residual error. So initially it was 27,483 and now it is around 22,167. So the interpretation of this reduction is that as we increase the degree of the polynomial fit from zero to one, I'm able to get a comparatively better fit because now the residual error has got decreased. Accordingly, you can see the different outputs for the different degrees. So at the end, when we are going to fit a polynomial curve of degree 10, we will be getting 11 different coefficients along with the residual error, right? So I hope you have followed this particular step. In case you haven't, pause this particular video and convince yourself about the accuracy of the answer that you are getting, like how, to what extent are they correct, okay? Then in the, in the final step, what I will be doing is I will be creating a plot between residual error and the degree because we have already seen that as we vary the degree of the polynomial, the residual error that we are getting is different. So what we are going to do next is that we are going to plot the a graph and that graph is going to show us the variation of residual error against the degree of polynomial, right? So we already know that the degree of the polynomial is stored in the array called degrees. 
and all the residual errors are stored in this particular list. So what I will be doing is in the first step, I will be converting this list into a NumPy array and then I will be plotting residual errors against the different degrees, right? So let us run this particular command and then try to figure out how the output looks like. So this is my output. On the y axis, we are going to have the residual error values and on the x axis, we are having different degrees. So as the curve clearly shows, with smaller degrees, the quality of my fit is not very good because for a smaller degrees, we are getting a higher value for residual errors, right? However, as we start to increase the degree, the residual error starts to fall. It basically means that when we start to increase the degree of the polynomial that we choose to fit the data, the quality of my fit gradually improves. And this improvement is manifested as a reduction in the residual value error. But after a while, what happens is that uh, a further increase in the degree of this particular polynomial does not affect the residual error. So that is a call for us to stop increasing the degree of the polynomial further. Why is it so? Because we always want a curve to be optimal and it should also have less number of degree because when a polynomial curve is having less number of degree, it basically means the number of coefficients that the algorithm has to compute is less. For example, if the coefficient, if the degree is equal to 3, as in this case, so there are only 4 coefficients that are supposed to be determined. On the other hand, when the degree is equal to 10, there are 11 different coefficients that the algorithm is supposed to derive. So in the latter case, when it has to derive 11 different coefficients, the time complex, the model is complex and we do not want that thing to happen. We want that my model should be able to give us a ma max of the best possible fit and at the same time it should be having less number of parameters to compute. So in this particular case, if I look at this particular diagram, what I can suggest is that an optimal value for this degree will be equal to 3. That means for this kind of a data that was given to us, we should be able to fit this particular we should be able to fit a polynomial of degree 3 to this particular data okay and that particular fit should be more than optimal right now before i stop this video uh, there are some caveats that i want to share with you because that are actually required when we actually go in real world so the two caveats that are associated with this polynomial curve fitting is the first thing is it is not very much suitable when the degree of the polynomial has to be very large so in case you are supposed to, in case you are being told to fit a polynomial curve of degree 100 or 200 like that so you should refrain yourself from going for a polynomial fit moreover when you find out that there is good gap between there's a good interval gap between the data points even in those kind of situations you should avoid using a polynomial fit okay so the one thing that i can some use to summarize these two points is that whenever you go for a polynomial fit, you must also go for an exploratory analysis, something of this form. So this will basically give you a basic idea of what the function should look like, right? Like in this case, there is no significant interval gap. So my polynomial fit was sufficient, right? But in case you have got observations for which there is huge interval gap. So in those kind of situations, your polynomial fit may, might not work. And lastly, because you have been with me throughout this particular video, I want to share with you a very professional tip. And the tip is that in case you find out the polynomial fit is not very much satisfactory, then you must always go for interpolation using splines. Chances are more likely that by using splines, you will be able to fit the data more accurately. Okay. So with this, we come to the end of this particular session. I hope you have learned something new. In case you have done, please share it with your friends so that they are also updated. With this, we come to the end of this session. In case you have any issues, please put them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. With this, I now sign off.